Good morning. Um, my name is Kang Lee. So I will continue Andrew's uh, presentation on hallmarks of uh, uh, our centers. So of course, I will focus on inorganic membranes. Um, In fact, if you look at our research in inorganic membranes, we actually looking into various geometries first. We prepare membrane from disk to flesh sheet to hollow fibers and also to multi-channels. And we also focus on the modules. Uh, making module in ceramic membrane is uh, slightly different from hollow fibers. Of course, the membrane operates at low temperature for ceramic membrane, then making the module will be very similar to polymeric membranes. But uh, ceramic membrane usually operate uh, at very high temperature for certain applications. So sealing will be uh, one of the challenge. So this will be one of our activities in uh, the center for develop, development of uh, uh, high temperature ceilings for modules. Um, as you can see from here, this is uh, basically hollow fiber modules. And uh, using at uh, room temperature, we can just use epoxy resin. It's very similar to um, polymeric membranes. But if we operate at high temperature, then this type of sealant need to be replaced by high temperature sealant. Um, for flash sheet, can be very easily like a plate flame to stack together to make a final modules. Um, another distinctive feature for this center is uh, we are not only look at uh, the geometry, we also look at the morphology or cross-sectional structures of the ceramic membranes. And if you can see from this diagram, um, looking at her here, it's a separation layer, um, can be porous or non-porous, depending on what kind of uh, materials you selected for making the membranes. But when we start to send down the top separation layers, we gradually see this uh, separation layer start to gradually transform into the microchannels. Uh, there are many thousands, thousands of channels uh, aligned in, through the cross sections. And this gives us uh, additional feature for multifunctionality of the membranes. And you can see from these diagrams, we have, uh, we have a micro channel is sandwiched by two, separa two separation layers in the out surface and the inner surface. And we can have also microchannel open to the out surface or the microchannel open to the inner surface, depending on how we prepare and eventually to give uh, a different type of uh, morphology of the membrane. And currently we are continuing on other morphologies of the ceramic membrane to give a more uh, focused applications. Um, it's, um, we've been working on this uh, the ideas try to find out what, how this uh, kind of um, microchannel is formed. And we believe it's uh, due to the interfacial instability, which means uh, really tailor instability, viscose fingering, or Marigoni effect can be used to create such a long fingers. And one more thing I want to mention to you, I'm sure you, you noticed from the STM, when we send down, the, the microchannel diameters getting gradually increased. And uh, in fact, this, this microchannel is conic shape and it gives you negligible resistance for mass transfer. And at the same time, we can use this uh, uh, tubes, this microchannel acting as micro reactors for multifunctionality. So this technique can be used for fabrication of almost all the inorganic materials from functional ceramics engineering ceramics, or even metals. So let me just show you some of the study we carried out in this three type of materials we've uh, been using. Um, first, let's uh, look at this, uh, the dense 
functional ceramic membranes. This type of membrane materials and eventually turn into either disc or hollow fibers or multi-tubes. It's mainly used for uh, oxygen and hydrogen separation. Uh, when we fabricate into this kind of structures with separation layer on the top and a gradual transfer into uh, micro tubes or micro channels, this will give us uh, uh, much less mass transfer resistance and at the same time give uh, still high selectivity. And you can see here, this is clearly indicate when the thickness is reduced, is the oxygen permeation great, greatly in, increased it, compared with uh, other studies carried out by uh, using this uh, symmetric type of uh, structures. So this is uh, one of the applications in functional ceramics. And we can also look at this functional ceramics used for uh, not only the separation and also the chemical reactions. And if you look at this uh, uh, particular functional ceramic used to separate oxygen from air side, and this oxygen will enter into the micro channels where the catalyst, uh, missing coupling catalyst is deposited. And in this particular micro channel, the missing coupling reaction taking place, leading to the high yield and the selectivities of the particular uh, reactions. And in fact, if you look at the yield we achieved, and so far it is still the highest in the literature. So this is the function of ceramic. And let's, let, let me talk about this engineering ceramics. And when we use engineering ceramics to make such a, a membrane, and usually it's ready for microfiltration and ultrafiltration applications. But of course, uh, we can also use this particular type of uh, membrane for further development of the functional separation layers. And uh, as long as we do a uh, surface modifications <laughs> and make sure that the surface is smooth enough for further depositions of uh, like uh, metal organic framework. And one of the metal organic framework we focus on is uh, your IO66. It's a water stable type of uh, 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 MOF. And uh, we've been developing this uh, particular thing layers for seawater desalination and also for dehydration of the uh, water from uh, biofuels. Um, apart from this uh, 3D materials, we also focus on this uh, depositions of uh, 2D materials. Uh, typical example is uh, we've been studying for a few years is uh, this uh, graphene oxide. We coat graphene oxide for water permeations, and we also work on other 2D materials, MOS2 and other metal oxides to the nanosheet being deposited onto the substrate. Of course, we can also using uh, palladium uh, metals as a separation material to deposit onto the surface of the substrate for hydrogen permeations. And apart from the surface depositions, we also work on this uh, catalytic converter. This uh, part is, uh, we try to utilize the micro channel. This micro channel give uh, a huge geometric surface area. So we can deposit three-way catalyst into the micro channel surface and to have a more efficient emission control in cars. And uh, this, if you look at the, this micro channels, and if we put this uh, environmental catalyst into it, uh, we can gradually, uh, greatly reduce the actual size of the catalytic converter. This is the commercial one. This is the actual one we developed. It's more than 50% of reduction in terms of volumes, and also reduction in terms of uh, catalyst loading. It's a precious metal catalyst. It's more than 60% reductions with the same performance. And uh, other pressure job is one of the important uh, parameters you need to look at. If we have a catalytic converter and our car engine performance will 
definitely reduced if the pressure drop is high. So because we have a large diameters with additional surface area available, so this pressure drop reduced to uh, minimal, and this will give us uh, uh, increased engine performance. So all these advantages uh, lead to us to have a spin-up company called Macrotex Ceramics. Um, it's a spin-up by uh, Imperial Innovation. Now the company is in the second stage. The, this uh, is developed. It's now is uh, in test of a real environment in one of the cars, try to make sure it's uh, stable, robust, and uh, eventually will be commercialized commercialization will be taking place. And looking at the size, this gives us more flexibility. We can even move this particular small uh, catalytic converter near to engine to have a high temperature, to have a more complete conversion of the NOx, CO, and hydrocarbons. So this is another feature of the research in this center. So. Um, this uh, engineering ceramics, this type of membrane can also be used for uh, multifunctions. And this, uh, one of the students just uh, uh, deposit the functional adsorbent into the fingers and they use it for simultaneous macrofiltration and asinic removals. And some students just put membrane and as well as a catalyst into the membrane on the out surface and the catalyst into the macro channel to have a, a one step steam reforming at low temperature. So all this is a kind of innovative design in membrane uh, reactors, multifunctions. So now let me just uh, finally look in, present to you this uh, metallic hollow fiber membranes. So one of the particular application we focus is we produce metallic membrane with uh, micro channels and we using copper to produce into hollow fiber with open micro channel in the inner surface. This will give us enormous in, uh, internal geometric surface area. Then after this we coat this station face into the micro channels and uh, use for separation. The beauty part is uh, this uh, metal ductile, you can make it into a coil, coil up into a small volumes. Um, so this particular type of uh, membrane chromatography will give us uh, both advantage of uh, capillary column as well as uh, pack columns. We can have a large in injection of the uh, measurements and also because of the large loading of the stationary phase, so our injection volume can be greatly increased to give us accurate measurements of the uh, gases or liquid to be separated. So another part we focus on and still continuing is uh, we use dual face metal to turn this dual face metal into uh, hollow fibers. You can see here is uh, the substrate has a mixture of uh, stainless steel and copper. And on top of the surface, we have uh, just some copper. And it uses the precursor for graphing formations. And when CVD applied and graphing is formed on the top of copper in a single layer, after this, we leach the copper out to give us a graphing membrane on porous stainless steel support. And this one, of course, is still a challenge in the how we can actually engineer in the pores because graphing is totally non-porous and become, become a total protective layer. So if um, how we're going to engineering the pores with right size, with right porosity. This is something we are looking into it in this center. So I think I pass over to Camille for um, the for her presentation in this absorbent. <laughs> 